If you aren't ready, please do not peek. And please immediately pause this video and lose some more fat. Jello Beats, holla at me. Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So this has been a requested video. These are my only notes. Peak week. Yes, so a requested video has been peak week, my opinions, and to share my knowledge or at least share what I know with regards to peak week. And I think obviously I've released podcasts on this topic in the past, but one of the things I would like to say is that anything that I say in this video, please be open-minded enough to realize that at some point in the future, my opinions might change. And there might be a peak week number two video that comes from me, and it may well be different. Some of the stuff in it may well be changed. And that's something that I aspire to be like. I wanna be a coach which who isn't afraid to go back and say, oh, actually, I think differently now. And I think that on a lot of my videos, you may well see, like, week to week, specifically the contest prep update ones, where I might actually just sort of go back and sort of sound like I'm contradicting myself, which, in actual fact, it is contradicting, but it's also just me learning more and me developing a further knowledge or some new knowledge that I've gained. But anyway, to get into the video today, so we're going to discuss peak week, different variables, what I usually do, how I control things, and then some different approaches, be it male, female, etc. So first things first is going to be obviously nutrition. Now, the prerequisite for any peak week is the and this sounds boring because if you know this already, it's a bit boring, but you must be ready. You must be lean before peak week. You must be ready because a peak week in the grand scheme of things is one week and it doesn't change much. Just like one week of generic fat loss doesn't change much in your physique in the great scheme of things across the entirety of the prep. See, one week you can see changes but not huge ones. And it's the same for peak week. It's, it's, I, I like the term tweak week, just like I like a reload week instead of a deload week, I like tweak week. Because essentially all you're doing is making small tweaks to an already lovely little cake. You're just putting the, the icing and maybe a little cherry on the top. You know, it's the, it's the same with a black coffee, you know, you're just turning a black coffee from what was an instant brand to a, you know, maybe a Nescafe Azero. At the end of the week, you know, it's just a, it's just a nice little top up of the, um, just improving what you already have, which is good, but you're just making that little bit better, which is what a peak week is. So, if you aren't ready, please do not peak, and please immediately pause this video, and lose some more fat, because that's what's going to get you standing up on stage ready and looking well and looking right. And if if you if you aren't ready, then just use this final week as if it's the only show you can potentially do. For example, logistic reasons, or it's your first show and things like that. Don't bother peaking. Just just do another week of fat loss because that will serve you more benefit than feeding yourself full of carbohydrates, which essentially are just going to make you look spilled, and that's not good. So peak week for those that are lean, for most people, I like to take a backloading approach. So, we will have front loading and we'll have back loading. Front loading is where you start carbohydrates coming up at the start of the week, find a happy ground, and then start tapering off towards the end, or find that happy ground and sort of maintain it. Backloading, on the other hand, is where throughout the week, you know, you might do a series of low days followed by higher days towards the end of the week. So, you're trying to forcing glycogen or, or flushing glycogen towards the end of the week to create a fuller physique. Now my rationale behind this guys is what I've seen through coaching and through with my own anecdotal experiences is that when you front load, 
the first few days of front loading, you get a wacky look. You get a really good look because carbs coming in, you get a super compensation effect. You might not be full to the brim, but you're pretty close. And then when you get that look, you're like, bruh, I'm three days out. And now what do you do? You try to put together this perfect protocol to maintain that look, and that is so hard to do. Especially as a coach, it's like super stressful, because you're like, shit, they look really, really good. What do I do now? Like, do I push, do I pull back? It's really difficult. So I like the backload approach because I can essentially try backloads through single day refeeds. And this is, again, one of my benefits of refeeds is that you do get to get an idea as to how to peak for a show because you get that day of higher carbohydrates, potentially lower fats, lower protein to sort of try things out. So you can trial a higher day, you can try sort of a more moderate day. You can see how you look the day after. You can see how you look two days after. You, you know, you get this idea of what you look, comparative flat to full. What we want on stage is the best balance of a full physique whilst maintaining as much of that conditioning as possible. Now, in different criteria, different classes, obviously you go from like bikini all the way up to men's bodybuilding. The severity of the peaking in order to create a look is different. And that's what I'll go on to in a bit with regards to bikini versus male bodybuilding as to how those approaches change and why you potentially don't need to consider peaking so much. But for the most part, nutrition macros wise, I do like a backload. And a backload will tend to look like a normal refeed for people who are decently lean and ready. For other people like Andrew, who was like super, super diced, really ready, we actually tried before his show, a rapid backload. So in that process, what we did is we did a week where Monday to Friday, no, Monday to Thursday, because the show was Saturday. Monday to Thursday, we did, actually no, I like the show was Sunday. So Monday to Friday, we did moderate depletion. And by depletion, I mean carbohydrate depletion. I do not mean calorie depletion. We reduced carbohydrates, we increased fat, dietary fat, and that equated calories to roughly about what he was on. We brought those down, taper, 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 so as carbs came down, fats kind of equated, so they went up slightly. And then on the Saturday, we loaded him with 950 grams or 925 grams of carbohydrates, about 40 grams of fat, and a gram per pound of protein. That went in looked incredible, huge super compensation effect, and he looked sick. He looked sickeningly good. And that approach would work really, really well. Uh, could you argue that you could have done a two day load and got a bit more in potentially, but I think that would take away the idea of the super compensation effect, which promotes this sort of skin. You know when you get like this skin bursting pump where you feel like literally everything's pushing against the skin, that's what we're trying to achieve with this kind of peak. And that only works for individuals that either could try that before, like get lean enough to try it before, which we did with Andrew. I wouldn't have risked it with someone else. I would have just done generic refeeds and just sort of peaked in that manner and not really changed much because if you look good, like a week out with a refeed, you'll look good on stage with a refeed. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's all like common sense that. So this breeds relevance to water and sodium, potassium. So Water wise, again, if you look good on your usual water intake, why the fuck are you going to go and change it? So I don't personally change water. However, with more carbohydrates coming in, I do tend to tell clients or with myself, I'll inherently drink more. When you've got more carbohydrates coming in, you need more water to take them to where they want to go. So I do tend to say, drink a little bit more water, but then not to the point where you're uncomfortable. And people tend to just auto-regulate that because when you eat a bit more food, you tend to just drink a bit more water. So I do, I guess, looking at that, I do increase water when the carbohydrates are coming in. Definitely don't taper water. I definitely don't bring water off. I don't sort of, like on show day, I'll have them still drinking water, just making sure that they don't bloat themselves. I won't do any sort of drying out protocol. I won't use any supplements to dry the client out or anything like that. 
I won't use wine the night before. I just no, I just don't do any of that whatsoever. And that's overcomplicating the process. Sodium and potassium. Sodium I will keep the same the entire week. The only manipulation to sodium that I make, this is inclusive of the loading day. I do not change sodium on the loading day. It will be naturally higher as a result of the carbohydrates being massively increased. So it will naturally sort of accumulate. Same with potassium, it will naturally be a little bit higher. I don't, I don't have the knowledge at the moment to specifically say the amount of potassium that I want people to have. Sodium will naturally be at a level that's just static, so we don't fluctuate that up and down. The issue with that is that you can quite easily spill off making drastic manipulations to sodium. Sodium on the show day, I'll have them eat meals at sort of nice intervals, so like six hours out, four hours out, two hours out. They'll usually be sort of like mm, decent amount of carbs, moderate fats, a bit more than they're used to, because I found dietary fat on show day actually does have some benefits in terms of fullness. This is just anecdotal, I've got nothing to prove that. So apart from apart from anecdotal experience, that proves it. But I find that you just get more vascularity, a bit more fullness from including a bit more dietary fat on the show day itself. So I'll have them eat meals at normal intervals. Sodium will be low, specifically low, so they won't be salting those meals or using their usual sodium up until pre-stage. Backstage, when they're pumping up, they'll have 250 mils of water, five grams of salt, which is usually a teaspoon. Mix that up, start drinking that whilst they're pumping up. The hit of sodium after running low sodium in the morning, man, try that. Just try that on a usual day, like even when you're fluffy in off season. Guarantee you'll get a we uh, like a wacky pump. Crazy pump, crazy vascularity, crazy fullness. That hit of sodium will be really, really good for you. And and you, what you want backstage is you want to feel confident and you want a good pump for that. Like, there's nothing worse than going backstage and feeling like you aren't getting a pump, you're flat, and you walk on stage, you, you when, you're, when you're flat, posing just doesn't feel the same, but when you're full, you're like, bang, hitting <coughs> shots. Like, bang. <coughs> Definitely gonna put some sound effects on that. Um, so, yeah, I... I really do like that backstage. That's something that I got from Team 3 and MJ when I initially. Uh, guys, like, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I'm. And Cliff Wilson has said this on one of his podcasts. I am obsessed. I am obsessed with this stuff. I, I, I spend all day just watching podcasts, videos, articles, blogs, um, YouTube blogs everything I can I just absorb knowledge I, I obviously my coaching is priority so I get like throughout the day obviously I'm doing client work but when I can like I just literally just invest myself in this so much so a lot of what I've learned and a lot of people often ask me where do you learn stuff is just from sitting here absorbing knowledge that is just everywhere which you can quite easily get by just look actively looking for it and actively involving yourself in the industry if you ask anyone, like, uh, I ask questions so much to guys that are ahead of me, and I, I almost feel like sometimes like I'm being rude or, or something like that, but I, I, usually they accept it because they know that all I'm searching for is just more knowledge. Uh, and I, that's why I run my podcast as well, I just want more and more knowledge. So, moving away from that into training, to cover training quite quickly, I don't want to make this video too long, so no one will watch it. So... Training wise, I, and let me know if you want like a longer one, I can e easily blab on for half an hour on this. So training wise, all throughout the week, up until Wednesday, if the show is Sunday, will be normal training. So absolutely normal, but just being very cautious as to not doing anything crazy. So we're in the last week, don't want to push things too crazily, but it will be normal training. Like you want to stay motivated, want to stay in your normal routine. And if you look good on normal training, you'll most likely look good, so, you know, for example, yeah. So from Wednesday onwards, I will actually do full body circuits. This will be inclusive of leg training. You will have light leg extensions and leg curls up until about two to three days out. For bikini competitors, I'll actually extend that. I'll keep leg curls, leg extensions, and uh, sort of glute moves in for the majority of the peak. The reason for that is because we want actually some like acute 
cell swelling, we want some acute soreness there to almost create like a fuller look. There's nothing worse than like loading or at least having carbohydrates and not doing anything to sort of push them into the muscles. So when we're doing these full body circuits, we're thinking all about peak contractions, we're thinking about getting a good pump, and that's the whole goal with those sessions. It's not to accrue training volume, it's not to get a session in, it's purely peak contraction work and making sure that we're getting a good pump and sending the glycogen exactly where we want it. So I don't believe in like loading and just sitting on the sofa. I just don't think that that's the most optimal way to load carbohydrates. Some people might do that and I'll happily take your argument. So please like, or take your point of view. And it's not necessarily an argument, it's just a point of view. So comment below if you have a different approach. But I see that training all the way up, the only day that I won't do a full body circuit is the show day itself. So I run full body circuits all the way up until sort of, you know, one day, uh, well, the show day itself. And obviously if you're traveling and things like that, it becomes a bit difficult to get the session in, but hopefully you'll be able to get that in. So I do believe that it breeds importance. I do believe that on the morning of the show, getting a pump and also in between the meals whilst you're at the hotel, doing a bit of light pumping up, I do, I do really believe that that provides benefit as well in terms of getting the glycogen exactly where you want it. In terms of male versus female, the severity or the differences in peaking is quite big. So for example, a bikini competitor, bottom of the sort of bottom of the circuit in terms of muscularity, the idea of loading a bikini competitor with a load of carbohydrates is pointless. I had a uh, I had a bikini competitor co compete last weekend, Jess. Now the whole approach with her is we had her run exactly normal nutrition throughout the entire week. She'd been refeeding every single week for at least eight weeks. I knew the exact response to those refeeds because I seen, I've seen her physique pre-refeed and post-refeed. So I knew exactly what she'd look like post-refeed. I knew that it was a better look, it was fuller. Uh, she felt better and she'd be able to get a little bit of a better pump on stage. Again, pump is relative to muscularity. So we've got to consider that she's a little bit less muscular than, uh, well, she's less muscular than a male bodybuilder, so we don't need to load her full of glycan, gly gly glycogen and fill her back up. So there you go, pretty simple for a bikini competitor. It might be a refeed one day out. As for a male bodybuilder, you've heard the approach with Andrew, that is literally the top end approach. Then we trickle back down, we have sort of approaches like just doing again, a refeed one day out. Then we also have approaches where we might do a little bit more of a back load, like a bit more aggressive if they're a bit leaner and a bit more ready to go, like really, 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 really lean. Again, it's relative to muscularity and relative to condition. This is all relative to that. Everything changes when you get a more muscular person versus a less muscular person. So for example, bikini competitor versus a figure competitor, I'd be more inclined to give the figure competitor a more aggressive peak, more glycogen coming in, more carbohydrates coming in, uh, more sort of slight fluctuations in, in the ability to load that sodium pre-stage. I didn't even have just do that thing pre-stage because to me it just breeds pointlessness. Uh, the same thing goes for sort of like managing these variables on show day, making sure that a, that a figure competitor has nailed every single meal versus a bikini competitor. The goal is to keep the waist tight, the stomach not bloated. With a figure competitor, it really brings relevance to get your meals in and get that full look whilst balancing condition and obviously keeping the, the stomach tight. So yeah, guys, I mean, I hope this has been good. I hope this uh, brew, like, sort of gives you a good insight as to the peaking processes. I'm, I apologize for it being so long, but like I said, I can bang on about this for quite some time. Any questions that you do have, please ask. Please clear anything up that you want cleared up. And any other topics that you'd like me to cover, I can do a peak week hashtag two video, which will follow on from this. But guys, thanks very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys.